Hi, this is Pat Love with Pat's Two Cents. Now, we're going to deal with something very serious, and this is dealing with the, the, the consecrated uh, sacrament of taking communion, the Lord's Supper, and how taking the Lord's Supper can make you sick and can kill you. Yeah, you didn't know that, did you? Well, this is going to be a down-to-earth warning, and I have a surprise. After I read this scripture, I'm going to show you what my surprise is. Now listen to this. I'm going to go to the scripture. So don't you dare go anywhere. Let's see. Holy Communion, 1 Corinthians. There you go. Okay. Now, I want you to hear this. This is 1 Corinthians chapter 11. I know that you know I have a communion video, but I wanted to pre uh I wanted this to be a precursor so that when people choose to do communion, they will know this before they do. All right. And then we're going to finish with Pat's two cents and something extra you'll know as soon as I'm finished reading the scripture. Here we go. Now, you really have to hear this, so don't go anywhere. Now, starting at verse 18. For first of all, when ye come together in the church, I hear that there be divisions among you, and I partly believe it. For there must be also heresies among you, that they which are approved may be made manifest among you. And when you come together, therefore, unto one place, there is not this is not to eat the Lord's Supper, for in eating every one taketh before other his own supper, and one is hungry, and another is drunken. What? Have ye not houses to eat, to drink in, and to despise ye the church of God, and shame them that have not? What shall I say to you? Shall I praise you in this? I praise you not. For I have received of the Lord that which also I delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he brake it and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is broken for you. Do this do in remembrance of me. After the same manner also he took the cup when he had supped saying, the cup is the New Testament in my blood. Okay, this do ye as oft as ye drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as ye eat this bread and drink this cup, ye do show the Lord's death till he come. Wherefore, whosoever, this is the warning, shall eat this bread and drink this cup of the Lord unworthily shall be guilty of the body and the blood of the Lord. But let every man examine himself and let, <clears throat> let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup. For he that eateth and drinketh unworthily eateth and drinketh damnation to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. Now, I'm going to stop right there real quick. Pat's two cents. My hand cannot hate my head. My stomach cannot hate my feet. My eyes cannot hate my ears. You hear what I'm saying? There can, okay, let me finish. Okay, let me finish the word. Not, right, or not discerning the Lord's body. Verse 30. For this cause, many, this is really your warning. For this cause, many are weak and sickly among you, and many sleep. Yeah, six feet under. Listen. For if you would judge, uh, if we would judge ourselves, we should not be judged. Now, I'm going to stop right there because a lot of people think that when it's time for the Lord's Supper, we can take the bread, we can take the wine. And, oh, yeah, I'm forgiven for sin. I'm good to go. I'm ready for a brand new start. Well, baby, who have you been bitter towards? Now, Pat's two cents. And now I'm going to introduce my guest. This is my guest, Mary.
And I am welcoming you, Muriel. Thank you so much for joining me because she's going to share how God revealed to her just how important unforgiveness to forgiveness is. Listen to this testimony. Thank you so much for being on with me, Muriel. It's great, Patty. Yes. No problem. Great. I want to be able to share this if it can help somebody. Yes, it will. Trust me, it will. Now go on and share your testimony. Okay, well, um, when I first really came to the Lord, not before when I was just basically a fake Christian and everything, but no, I mean, I mean, when the Lord really started to wake me up, mm -hmm. the first encounter I had with Him that was real was I had a dream, and it was of events that had happened with um, my sibling. Um, well, I said one of my siblings and unforgiveness I had towards him and but in the dream it wasn't me seeing it through how I saw it but it was the same events but they were saw through how he would see it and so I, I had that dream and I was, it was as if I was having the dream through his eyes and so when I woke up me still being stubborn and, and still being in my sin and not wanting to, to, to admit I was like no that's not I remember literally saying I woke up and said no that's not how that happened I said, no, that's not how that happened. And I still wanted to, to have that victim mentality. You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? And I just, I didn't want to, to, to believe that. So in other and, words, what you're saying is you saw it from a different perspective than the way you remembered it. Yeah, the before, instead of seeing it, the, events, the way I had, had seen it all these years, I was, I was seeing it from his perspective. The Lord showed me everything that was going on, but from his perspective. Look at that. He was seeing it. Yes. And, you know, and, and it was, you know what I'm saying? And so I remember waking up and I, I, I distinctly remember, I said, no, that, okay, that's not how that happened. That's not how that happened. You know what I'm saying? And I, I, didn't, I didn't realize that was the Holy Spirit. I didn't know that. I didn't, you know, mm -hmm. didn't have no encounter before with the Holy Spirit. I didn't know that. You know what I'm saying? I wasn't saved then. I didn't know. And so um, all I know is that I, I had that dream. I just remember thinking, okay, that's, no, that's not how that went. I remember arguing. I was like, no, no, that's not how that went. That's not what happened. And, <laughs> and yeah, 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 I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm that dumb to, to argue with the Lord. I would. I'm like, because I remember saying, no, that's not how that happened. No. And so me being stubborn, I let that go. And then a um, few more months came by, and um, I noticed, okay, when I was trying to come to the Lord and everything, I, I've always had, every time I tried to come to the Lord, I always had this, it was almost like a block. Only way I can describe it is like almost being like in a freaking uh, glass bubble almost. You know what I'm saying? Like I can, you know, I can, you know, I can hear about the more. I can, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I can maybe get like a feeling, but there was not that closeness. It was mm -hmm. not that connection. You know what I'm saying? And I just, I could not get that. And I, I, I remember even asking someone, I said, okay, why is it I can see other people praising? Like I see people, other getting close mm -hmm. to love, but I can never do that. I can't do that. I just, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And um, I remember praying a prayer about that and, to, 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 for the Lord to, to show me, to open that up for me. And I just, I noticed that I had a lot of unforgiveness and a lot of bitterness. And again, I didn't want to admit that. And, you know, we don't want everyone to admit that we're wrong. We don't <laughs> want to, that's the first thing the Lord will show you, you know, when you're wrong. You know, when yep. And when he does show it to you, agree with him. Don't don't be stupid like I was and, and, and waste months and, and months, uh, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Agree with him. That's we right. To come to a point where we, we say, you know what? I'm the problem. Right. Anyway, I when he he did show me the stuff. I started asking him to 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 reveal the stuff and to 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 free me of it. You know what I'm saying? Yes. And I was I was under a lot of demonic torment at the time. Mm. Anyway, but I just I didn't know understand why and all this stuff like that. And that's another thing. We you know when we don't forgive, we give you know we we give all that demonic torment. Uh, you know, license to be there. Yes. So, yeah. Say that again. Repeat that. When we when we're disobedient to God and we don't forgive and we don't do the things He said told us to do, we're basically giving the giving the demons and all that demonic torment. We're giving it license to be there. We're giving them legal right to do that. Thank you. God's will. And so we're we're allowing them to do it. And then we cry out to God and we're like, Why don't you deliver me? Yeah. And He's up there like, Cause you won't do what I said. Thank you. You, you, know, you. you obey, you know what I'm saying? You obey, and, and, I, and I've noticed that the more I obey, the more that torment goes away, and right. it goes away, and it goes away. Right. I mean, and I just, but I, I got to a point where I was like, you know, another thing, when he was starting to take that away, me being impatient, well, why can't I do, why 
God, you have to have this word, you know, and, and another thing came to my mind, which I believe was the Lord, because, you, you know, I got in my head, because you let it fester so long. You can't, you know what I'm saying? It's like cleaning up a, a toxic dump, you know? You, when you let that fester, I mean, imagine, okay, we can't see in the spirit, but imagine, okay, cause, you know, imagine you can see in the spirit. Your spirit, you know what I'm saying, when you do all that unforgiveness, you keep that and that hurt and that bitterness. And, okay, imagine these gaping wounds filled with pus. So we go to the Lord asking him to clean it up. And so, yeah, he, you know, he's asking him to clean it up. And here we have this little alcohol right here. Lord, clean it up with this. No, he has to do major surgery on us. He has not only has to get to the point where we forgive and we let that stuff go, but then we have to get to the point of why did we hold on to it to begin with. Thank and you. We, and what? Once we do that, then he, he shows us why we did it so we don't do it again. Because if we can continue to do that, you know what I'm saying, that's, the, you know, that's not going to be productive. So he takes us to the point of not only cleaning it up, but showing us why we did it so we don't get in that mess again. And then so we can teach others how to do it as well. Right, right. Let me cut in right here, girl. Oh, you made such wonderful points. Thank you. Listen. Do you know how they talk about those open, gaping wounds, their runny sores like a like a decupitus, a bed sore? Some of them get so infested and I mean so in, infected that a nurse has to go in with a long glove and, and instruments with cotton and everything and go in and, and clean out. And sometimes those things go all the way to the bone. I mean you could see the bone once they clean out the wound. That's what we do in life. And we don't realize when, this is my warning, when we take communion, when the Bible says taking it unworthily, some are weak, some are sickly, and some sleep. They're basically dead. Now, we don't understand why some things happen. But see, we can't see inside of a person's heart. We know ourselves there, it some things took us a long time to forgive, a long time to get over. We wouldn't release. Some of us still won't release some things. And when you take communion over that, you're not only allowing a wide door for the devil to have legal right, like Mariel said, you are also allowing sickness to lodge in your body. All those negative poisonous toxins come in and they eat away at your body they eat away at your mind your heart your emotions your spirit and then after a while they slowly eat away and suck out your life and you die because you keep taking communion over a pile of toxic waste continue sweetheart yeah, I mean, and I was like I said, that stuff that's in the spiritual, it will start to manifest in the in the natural. That's I right. Sick, stuff like that, and I didn't know why. I had all this whim and stuff like that. When I was like, why am I getting all this? Why am I doing? You know, and yeah, basically, you know, what I'm saying all that stuff is festering inside of me. You know, and then when even when you do come to the Lord and you, you know, what I'm saying you you release it and all that, say He has to clean that up. Then you have the enemy constantly attacking you, trying to get you to, well, you know, well, they did that, they did that, you know what I'm saying? And That's right. What has shown me, every time you have, um, you know, you want to have unforgiveness in your heart, or you want to have unforgiveness for something, or someone does something to you, or, you know what I'm saying? You need to look at it as, as this way, okay? It's not that person. You need to see the spirit behind it. That's that right. person, you know what I'm saying? That person is being used as a, as a tool or as a puppet of, of Satan. And so you know you need to not look at them like that way. Our only enemy on this earth is Satan. That's, right. that's it. Right. I don't care what anyone's done to you. I don't care what anyone's done. Our only enemy is Satan. That's I'm right. You, and, you know, he, everybody else is just a puppet used by him. And we can't, you know, we can't judge or not say judge. We can't hold unforgiveness against someone else because you have to remember, we all came. None of us were born, you know, you know, were born, you know, Christians. All of us at one time were used by Satan. Born and shapen in iniquity. And so we have, yeah. So we have to realize, okay, I don't want to forget this. This I don't want to forgive this person. You know, who I wonder who has unforgiveness towards me. Mm-hmm. With that, because you know, and it's like, okay, so if I don't, you know, if I don't want to, if I don't, you know, if I want to be forgiven, I need to forgive. And yeah, that's a commandment from God because He says, if you will not forgive. 
I will not forgive you. Yeah, not only that, but the Lord here also has had me praying to ask, you know, praying for not to be a stumbling block to anyone. Anyone that you, know, that you might have hurt, you know what I'm saying, you have to start praying for them so that, you know what I'm saying, that if they have unforgiveness in their heart towards you, you pray for them so that they, you're not a stumbling block to them, so they can release that unforgiveness. And you, know you go to them and ask them to forgive you if possible. Yes. If it's yes. possible. That's right. Yes. And see, if you have to, because that will, it will fester in you. It will fester. Mm -hmm. I, I know this. It will fester in you. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And then it not only will it fester, but it will distort your view of, of, of how things happen, you know? Right. It will, you know, it, and, you know, it, 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 and it just, it just continues to grow and grow and grow. And as you call it, what you said, a root, it does. It becomes a root. Right. It does and become you a root. you deep things to, to, to have it uprooted. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. I said the Lord not only has to clean it up, but then he has to pull that root out and not only show you how you got there. Mm, mm, mm. And listen, here's that's a beautiful point. Because see, what we don't realize is when God is uprooting, what ends up happening is we actually stop feeling that feeling anymore and we don't yeah. realize how easily god can do it because we've nursed this thing we we gave birth to it we, we we took care of it all this time it's it's mine i have a right to this and we don't want to let go we don't want to let go and we do not realize everything is is waiting for you to let go if you don't let go Something's got a hold of you, baby, and I'm telling you, it will poison you alive. Now, before this video goes too long, we're going to come back and continue on the next video. You guys can't go anywhere because this is very, very important. One thing I do want to say, and I'm going to follow it into the next video. When we talk about what they diagnose people with as bipolar, paranoid whatever paranoia it all comes down to unforgiveness resentment bitterness anger rage and fear and hurt which makes us paranoid i mean it all crumbles into a nasty little package that it becomes this little monster that eats away at our lives and every single day and sabotages relationships and friendships and family ties. Why? Because we won't chuck it up. Or they call it up chucking. We won't allow God to uproot that bad boy. Now we're going to end here and we're going to come back on the next video. Thank you so much, Mario. You have shared some golden nuggets on this one. God bless you. We will be right back.